I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the mass spring damper concept, which is uh, very familiar to you, hopefully, from past courses, um, including the Dynamic Systems and Controls uh, lecture. And um, really just want to point out two different uh, configurations that are very helpful and, um, in my opinion, are, 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 are good to keep in mind when you're looking at very basic mechanical systems. Um, so you know that in courses like 344, you, we study both the unforced or natural response and forced response. And these uh, analytical solutions that we um, can derive for systems of this type, which are second order in nature, can be very helpful when we think about designing experiments for these kinds of systems that we can model this way. And also, they have actually give us insight into not only the design of sensors, but also how to use them. So just want to point out the fix the base and also the um, basic sided configuration. Just keep in mind, in this case, typically we'll have a mass suspended to a fixed base, right? And we might have forcing on here, or we might look at depressing and releasing this. So that would be the unforced response, or we might be forcing this with with a given force. And this is a really good model, right, for many practical vibration problems, as well as for some practical sensors that have mass and stiffness and damping. The basic sided system is also a very common configuration. Now the base is actually the part that you're exciting. In this case, we might show a displacement here, or actually uh, we might excite that with not y of t, but probably the velocity of the base. And then we are interested in the motion of the mass, and then the suspension, if you want to call it the spring and damping system, is between that base and the mass. So we'll, we'll derive those models and look at them in detail, but I will show you some solutions of those models. Um, this is a this is a good model for a simple vehicle suspension. You can imagine now the the motion at the at the base would be a model for how the road is providing a motion input at the base, and then you might be interested in how the vehicle mass is responding. It's also the model for what we call seismic sensors, which are three different types. One is a um, seismometer, which measures displacement. Another is an accelerometer which measures acceleration and another one that we won't talk about um, uh, at the current time is a geophone which is used to measure the velocity of the base so um, maybe in a different uh, video i'll talk a little bit more in detail about those three together um, but again this is a good model for those kinds of sensors i'd like to present just the model here of the fixed base system, right? And let's look at the case where we're not not forcing this, so we're just looking at the response uh, to the initial to an initial condition. And the initial condition here, because there are two states, right? There's two um, initial conditions, right? And one of them is gonna be uh, the initial position and the other should be the the velocity how 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 you know what was the velocity at time zero say but first let's put the model um, in a standard form again there's no forcing on the right hand side so that's zero but right we divide by the mass and so we define uh, the term in front of the x dot uh, term as sorry these parameters as 2 zeta omega n and the parameter in front of the x term here as omega n squared. And that allows you to define two critical parameters that you should really be familiar with to understand a lot of what we do in this laboratory and what you are probably do in analysis of any kind of second order system. And that's the damping ratio. And the other is the undamped natural frequency. You know, those are easy parameters to remember. The omega sub n in radians per second is just the square root of stiffness divided by mass, and the damping ratio depends on all three parameters in this combination. And a couple of other parameters are good to remember and how they're related to these parameters is the natural period, 
and also the natural frequency in Hertz. Okay, so all those relationships are here for you to review. Now let's look at the fixed space system, but let's take away the damping and let's look at the undamped motion just so we can understand a little bit about how the key parameter of natural frequency, undamped natural frequency, affects the response. So if we just have undamped motion and let's just look at the again unforced case, undamped, and there's no damping. Oh, that took out that term here. If if uh, it's easy to um, see that if I here's a mass suspended. I pull that mass, given some initial displacement, and release it, it's just going to oscillate the period, the natural period then, I should write these, this is T sub n there, is um, 2 pi over omega n, right, I don't want to write that way, I want to write it as 2 pi over omega n, um, and the amplitude is known because I gave it the initial condition of x naught, it's undamped, so it's always going to have the same amplitude at every cycle because there's no damping to reduce it, right? And um, the neat thing about just remembering this real simple case is that if it uh, allows you to remember some very ba the very basic relationships between uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So once you know x naught, you should be able to predict peak velocity, right? That's just going to be x naught times the natural frequency or acceleration which is just another derivative so um, and here are those derivative relationships and so you can see that if you just know two quantities like x naught and natural frequency you you know all of those basically peak basically you know all those um, uh, param uh, sorry quantities such as peak velocity peak acceleration alternatively if you knew that peak acceleration and you measured the period and you knew it was lightly damped. Think of an experiment there and let's say you measured stiffness. You could estimate mass, right, because of the relationship between the variables. So that's why keeping in mind these parameters, they can be used in different ways to find other parameters by designing very simple experiments in the lab. And just want to show you a couple of application cases. One is, as I mentioned, motion sensors like accelerometers are, are base excited mass spring damper systems. Right here's a simple schematic showing, okay, here's the base. The whole case is moving. It's attached to this moving ground here. So both, you know, think of, I mean, this damping here call it B instead of C and K they're in parallel just drawn differently here but they're relative to the base right so it's exactly as we it's the same system as we saw before you're moving the base uh, and the motion of that mass and this is what's called a seismic mass this stiffness here typically is chosen to be some kind of a sensing element uh, and something that we'll talk about that you'll talk about in the lab how you could build an accelerometer by inserting some kind of sensing element here uh, like a beam which is a very common configuration for building accelerometers right damping is usually introduced just so that you can make sure that you your mass doesn't oscillate forever you don't want that to happen you um, that 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 oscillation is at the natural frequency you don't want to be resonating at that frequency when you're trying to measure other frequencies in the input, right? So you want to introduce enough damping so that the system responds well, but at the same time doesn't ring, so to speak. Okay, so you don't want ringing. And so damping is essential, okay? Something you might see in the lab. So here's a configuration showing how we have a beam with a mass at the end, and this is equivalent in some ways to a, a, a mass spring damper system because we can think of this beam as being an ideal spring and if we do that a cantilever beam has a stiffness that we can easily find from known parameters or measurable parameters or estimated parameters um, and so you can see that this is an, 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 a nice setup because we can think of different 
types of systems, well, both types of, of mass spring damper systems that we've talked about. In the case of a fixed base, so let's say we fix this base here as shown, and if we mount strain gauges here, say, like we've discussed in related videos, now we have a fixed base system and we can, we have a mass spring, there's inherent damping in the beam, we have a mass spring damper system. And uh, this is a system that can be used as a force sensor um, by applying tip loads here. Note that once you know, say, the stiffness of the beam, if this, if this guy deflects a certain amount x, you, if you understand how, say, if this was instrumented with a strain gauge, you could measure uh, either force or displacement if you have uh, the the stiffness of the beam estimated, say, from experiments. So this is a, a, a nice, simple configuration for studying basic force sensors. Alternatively, let's let's say we we move the base and don't excite the the mass. Now it looks like a base excited system, and so we can sort of play around with this setup as a seismic type sensor, right? So if we induce motion of the base, the strain gauges then will detect the relative motion right between the base and the mass. And this configuration will give us a response, if you like, that's similar to what you would see in some seismic sensors. Just one last note here on treating this as a, you know, is this really a good uh, model here? Let's say we were base exciting. Is this a good model for... Um, Rather, is this mass spring damper system a good model for this for this mass beam system? And one of the things to think about is that this is a beam, so really it has mass. Well, certainly it has stiffness. We know that some stiff some, some stiffness characteristics, but it also but it also has mass. What does that mean? It means that it's not going to be an ideal spring like we might model it here. So depending on the size and thickness and um, and also there's some, again, material damping, you may see uh, some dynamics of this beam, what we call higher modes, that uh, you don't expect, right? So just wanted to make a note of that because that's something that you might see um, in, in courses on vibrations. Uh, you might study how to model these beams as what we call it's a call continuous you know element or body and what that means is you know like in the if you're familiar with finite elements right that is actually let's say we talk about axial instead of vibrate instead of uh, vertical vibration to make it easy you know you might actually think of that as many masses and springs, right? Infinite number. To, instead of an ideal spring, right, you actually have multiple masses here, distributed mass. And what happens then is it's, it, you're going to see, as I said, higher or, what we call higher order behavior that, that um, you have to uh, explain.